In a previous video, I created this cluster called cluster one, and I added in these two server nodes, server one and server two. Now what I need to do is to add in some shared storage by clicking on storage and then disks. I've gone ahead and connected to a storage area network, which in this case was a Windows server that's running an iSCSI target. So now I need to turn the disk on that I've already connected to. So I'm going to go to Computer Management, and you'll see the storage here. It says that it's offline. So i got to bring it online first. So I'll click on Online, and I'll choose to initialize it. I'm going to choose the GPT type of partition, although MBR would work as well because we're using less than 2 terabytes. And now the next thing to do is to allocate the storage. So I'm going to create a new simple volume. And I'll just choose all the defaults that you see here. And click Finish. And it's created my 10 gigabyte E drive. Now I'll go back into Failover Cluster Manager and click to add the storage. It should pick up that storage because it's not being used for anything else. And there it is. So I'll click OK. And now it's going to add it into the storage. Now I have an option here. I can either leave this as regular storage, and each server node can use this one at a time. So if I add a file share, for instance, then server one can use it. And then when server one's not using it, then server two could use it. But that's not very efficient. So what I want to do is I want to add in a cluster shared volume. A cluster shared volume is different because both servers can now use it at the same time. So I'm going to right-click on the storage and choose Add to Cluster Shared Volumes. And it automatically converted my storage right into a cluster shared volume. You can see it's assigned to the cluster shared volume there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into File Explorer. And what you're going to see is the storage is now available as a folder inside your C drive. And it's going to be available on both servers at the same time. So I'll go to where it says this PC and double click on my C drive. And there's a new folder that was created called Cluster Storage. Inside Cluster Storage, we're going to see the volume, which is going to be that 10 gigabyte volume. And there it is, and it's called Volume 1. The first volume is always called Volume 1, but you can rename it if you'd like. And there is the storage. So I can go ahead and add any type of data here, and it will be visible on all the different server nodes that are connected to it at the same time. So now I'm going to go into Server Roles. And you can see there's no roles in there yet. So I'm going to click on Configure Role. And I'm going to add in a server role that's available to me. So you have lots of different options here. You can choose the DFS namespace server, DHCP server, all these different options that you see here. I'm going to go and choose the file server. Now you have to make sure that file server is installed on both the servers or all the different server nodes before this will work. I'll click Next. And now I have a couple of options. I can choose the file server for general use. That's where it will be available on one server at a time, but not available at both servers. I don't want to do that. Since I've added in the cluster shared volume, I can go ahead and choose the scale out file server option. Click Next, and I want to give that a name. This is going to be a name that's going to be added into DNS automatically. I'm going to call it file share one and click Next. Next again and Finish. After adding in the Scale-Out File Server, now I can add in a file share. So I can choose Add File Share. And sometimes you'll get this message if you don't wait 5 or 10 minutes saying that it's not quite ready for the share creation. So I'll wait a little bit, come back, and then go ahead and create. I waited a few minutes, and I tried it again, and now we see the Retrieving Server Configuration box pops up. And now I have the option for creating a new share. There's lots of different options that you could choose here. However, if you have an installed File Server Resource Manager, you cannot choose the advanced option. Applications are specific for applications, but if you're just doing a simple file share, then Quick is really the best way to go. And the NFS options have to do with Linux shares, so those don't apply here. So I'll click Next. And now I need to put in the custom path of the folder that I'd like to share. 
What I did was I opened up File Explorer and I just created a new folder called Share under the Cluster Storage Volume 1 folders. So I'll minimize that and then I'll put in that path and click Next. And I'll leave the default name and the default location just as you see it here and click Next. I'm going to choose the defaults, except for I am going to check the box for access-based enumeration, which basically states that if you don't have access to the folder, then you can't just browse to it. So that adds a little extra security if you want to use that. I'm going to choose the default control access, but you can go in and customize that to say who has access to this particular folder just by clicking on the Customize Permissions button. Click Next and click Create. The result of what's happening here is now there's going to be a file share that can be accessed by going into the network browser, or you can just put in backslash backslash file share one for the UNC path, and then you'll see that share folder show up. And that can be mapped to, say, a network drive on a client, and it can also be available just in case my server one goes down, then server two will automatically continue serving up that file share. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open up my file explorer. Now I'm going to put in the file server name, which is going to be file share one. That's going to be the cluster name that I had created. And there's my shared folder. Now I haven't added any data in yet, but any data that I add in here will be also visible on my other server node, server two, and of course any clients that may connect to it. In this video, I've added in storage, converted it to be a cluster shared volume, and then added in the server role of a scale-out file server.